Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. It is time for another quilt block for the quilt block party. If you are not familiar with this series, I have a playlist link down below in the description box and also in the comments of this video. We are making 20 cohesive blocks. We are on block number 17 today. This is foundation quilting where we sew our pieces onto a foundation. This is not to be confused with the backing. If you use this in a quilt or any kind of quilting project, you may still choose to put batting and then a backing. Make your sandwich with this block as the top slice of bread. I am trying to incorporate this blue gingham in every piece. I missed one. I forgot one. So I will be adding some to it later. But this is all I have for like a decent sized piece. This is folded. So I have to kind of not overuse it but it does have to go in this piece. I have quite a few pieces where I have used the blue gingham as like framework, so I think I'm going to do that on this one also. I'm thinking I'm going to have some fabric going this way and a strip going this way and then in one corner. And then I'm going to do a curvy frame, two of them, to separate those sections. We have two ways we can do those pieces that we're going to lay down. We could build right on the foundation, crazy quilt style, and I'll explain what I mean in a minute. Or we could create a strip set. I think I'm going to do a strip set, but I'm not sure yet. I'm a little confused because I don't really know what my idea is yet. <laughs> but I'm trying hard to come up with one. So let's just get started. Let me pick out some fabrics and I will be right back. Okay, I kind of have my idea. I'm going to take this block and I'm just drawing with a Sharpie permanent marker. This block will never be visible. And I'm going to just, hmm, section off, you know, it doesn't have to be a curvy line. Like this corner and this corner. I'm going to be covering this with framing or grids. I don't know exactly what to call it. So I'm going to leave a space there and a space there. Just so I know that my strip set, as long as I cover this inside line, I'll be good. And the same with the corners. So I think I am going to go ahead and do a strip set. I don't know if you can see that. Let me zoom in a little bit. So you can sort of see this block. I made lines. I'm going to be putting fabric in the two corners and then along the center, diagonally. Since I'm going to be using the gingham for the framework, I'm not going to bother to put it on the actual block in the strip sets because I'm going to save it as much as I can. I'm going to just pull fabrics that are at least as long as these two lines. And this is. So let me see. Let me pull some more. And at this point I can decide if I want them kind of narrow or maybe not so narrow. I am going to overlap them to allow for seam allowance. And they can be wonky. Let's go with wonky, okay? So let me do this one kind of on an angle. Is that long enough? It is. Let me do this one on an angle this way. Ooh, let's do a piece of this, like, animal skin print, whatever this is. Um, snake? Alligator? Pink alligator? Doubt it. Now what I was saying is, you could have done this, you know, by doing the actual foundation piecing. Like, take this to the machine, put it over and sew, and then open and press. You can do it that way. I'm just choosing to do a strip set. So let me just finish putting some fabrics down and I'll be right back. You know what, I've decided that I'm going to go ahead and sew these four together. I don't want this whole entire center to be loose from the foundation. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to sew these four together and lay it down and then I will finish building on the foundation. It'll be like part strip piecing and part foundation work. I think it'll make more sense to you as I do it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these off the foundation and sew them together, and then I'll be using that as like my starting piece for the quilt block. So let's just lift these off and keep them in order, and now I'm just going to sew them together. So I'm going to sew this one to this one, and I'm just going to wait until the end to press them all open. Now I'm going to sew this one to this one. And now I'm going to sew this whole thing to this one. 
And now I'm going to go and press this. All right, let's see if this will work. So I am laying this down. At this point, I can trim it. I know it's going to be past that line. Look, this is the beginning of a strip set. I'm keeping this forever. I will throw this away. I actually don't throw it away. All my scraps like this go into a basket that is just fabric and thread, and that can get all cut up which is going to be Skylar's job when she's here this summer, and used as filling for small stuffed animals and toys. And yes, those are coming soon, I hope. It all gets in a basket like this with a bag, and I make sure there's no paper, no needles, no nothing, only soft stuff. If I have pieces of batting, that does go in here. This is just like our regular blocks. We're just using this as our center. And now we're going to just start doing our regular foundation piecing, and it will hold that down. Had we done the whole entire diagonal like this, it would have all been loose. We could have gone in and stitched and done some quilting. That would have been great, but I'm not quilting these, so we're doing it this way. Let's put a piece of this in here. So this is going to go on this side, and let's do something else for the other side. Okay, we're going to finish this up just by sewing directly to the foundation. So I'm going to put this piece here, and this piece here, and I'm going to sew here and here. And that's going to attach it to the foundation piece. Don't know about you, but I'm having fun. Okay, I want to show you. I got a little too close to the edge. I got carried away with my excitement. So you can see how, look how close I am to the edge. I don't like that because with several washings, that could, you know, just, it's just too close for my liking. I want it to be safe so we can have years of abuse. So I'm just going to sew again, just a little bit lower than that line. There, now I feel confident that I have all that fabric captured. And what I do is I start sewing like in between those two lines and I stop in between those two lines because then it allows me to trim like I need to trim. Now we're going to sew this one. I like to sew with the majority of my fabric to my left, so I'm going to turn it. And now, just like always, I'm going to press this flat to set the seams and then I will open and press. And at this point, I can do whatever trimming I have to do. This really did save some time by doing a strip set in the center. Do like. Going to put this dark piece on this side, and I'm just going to take the whole thing to the machine, and then I'll trim the shape that I want after. And now we need something on here. I build on both sides at the same time because it saves time from getting up and ironing. So when you work in opposite directions like that, it's pretty cool. And I'm going to do the same here. I'm just going to lay this down and like this. And then I'll trim it after. And this is what I have. I like to trim after I sew just because then I'm not committed to a certain size or shape. Let's see. How about we go this way with this one? I kind of like the looks of that. And we'll cut that here. And trim right there. So we'll be able to do one more piece to finish off this end. Now let's look and see what we've got going over here. We'll do just one more on this one too. I'm not going to repeat anything in this particular row, but I will repeat these fabrics on both corners. So let's do this. Which end do I want it on? Oh, we got that piece there. Well, since I'm ending with something without a pattern on that end, let's do the same on this end. Right there. And since we have gone off the edges, I'm just going to turn to trim. And that looks pretty good. Now we're going to do the same in the corners, and since there's not a lot to fill, I'm not going to bother with a strip set. So let's start with a piece of this here. I'm going to lay one piece in the corner, and then I'm going to build on both sides. So let's go ahead and start with this guy. Let's do a narrow piece of this here. So I'm going to go like this. So we're going to do like this, so that's going to go like that. I'll take those off before sewing. I don't want to sew on top of them. Start with this guy. 
and I'm going to turn and work on this guy. Let's see, how do I want him? That will be good, likey this. So we have this, and I'm just going to trim somewhat around the corner. And then I'm going to trim here, just so they're not laying on top of each other, making more bulk. Now if I wanted, I could have been working on both corners at the same time, so there's less back and forth to the sewing machine. That would have been smart of me. But now I'm just going to go ahead and finish up here. We'll do a narrow piece of that, but I'll take it all with me. This one we could finish off, couldn't we? And I think I want this solid pink right there. So that's going to go like that. Going to trim that off, and then I'm just going to trim this here. And that's it for this side. This one I'm going to make this a little bit narrow, and I'm going to put one more piece on this end. So we'll finish it off with something here. So I'm just going to bring this to the machine and finish this one off. And since we're going off the edge on this one, I'm going to flip it to trim. All right, I'm going to turn this, and I'm just going to finish this corner off camera to save myself a little bit of uploading time. And then I will show you what I have, and we'll do the next step. This is what we have. I have not squared it up yet. I like to do that at the end. What we're going to do now is make some curvy pieces to put here and here to separate these rows. We're going to need some handy dandy wax paper or any paper that you can see through. I'm going to cut my wax paper in half and that'll give me a piece for each side. You just want to make sure you can cover your whole piece that you want to frame. Now it's up to you how wide or how narrow you want to make this curvy part. But the way I do curves as an applique, very easy. So we're going to just draw the curves that we want on the wax paper. So I'm not going to make like big humps and dips. I'm just going to be curvy like that, like that. That's a little bit wider than I would like, and not as curvy as I would like on the top part. As a matter of fact, I don't really care for any of this. <laughs> Let me see if I can do better if I do it again. Let's see if that will work for me. I don't know. We will see. Now what I'm going to do is we have a couple of choices. We can just pin this piece of paper onto your fabric. Now you want your fabric to be doubled. You want right sides facing because we will be turning this. You can just pin right directly to your fabric and sew on the black line. Or in my case, since I'd like it a little bit more narrow, I could sew just inside the black line. After we sew, we just rip off the wax paper. I think that's the way I'm going to do it. The other option is if you don't want to rip off the paper and you don't want to be picking out little pieces of wax paper is you could cut out your pattern, lay your pattern down on your fabric and trace around it and then sew on whatever line. But this is light fabric and I don't want to make a line with my permanent marker. I don't have anything else handy. So I'm just going to do this method. I'm going to lay this down and pin it. I'm pinning in the weirdest way, like in all directions here. And you'll see this up close at the machine. And I know these lines were long enough, but I'm just going to go ahead and extend them just to make sure I have everything covered. So I'm going to go and sew just on the inside of these lines because I'd like to make it a little bit more narrow. If you wanted to make your piece wider, you could sew on the outside of your lines. If you want it exactly this size, then just go ahead and sew on the line. And don't worry about following the pattern exactly, because we're just making this up, so it doesn't matter if it's the exact curve you drew. Okay, I didn't bother following that last line because I was going crazy. I think I'm going to take these pins out now, and I'm just going to sew. I think I'm going to follow the line this time. I don't want it to be too narrow. 
I've discovered I have to have the pins in there. It just will move too much. It's very slippery stuff, this wax paper is. There are definitely easier ways to do this. Like I said, the easiest way would have been to cut the curve out, lay it down, and trace around it with some chalk or whatever. I just like to make things difficult. Okay, let's see if this works better. <sighs> I ran out of top thread. All right, let's try this again. And I'm out of bobbin thread. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, I hate this method. Do not do. I am taking the pins out. I am cutting on this curve. And I'm going to use my handy dandy marker and draw a little bit outside the curve and I will sew on the inside of the curve. So all the black will be cut out. So let's do this. Just doing a light line to follow. All right, let's rip this off. I'm going to sew on the inside of this curve. I'm amazed that any of you can follow me. Oh, so much easier. Yay, that was so much easier. We'll do the next one together and I'll show you the new and improved way to do this. Okay, now I'm going to cut this piece, but obviously I'm cutting to the outside of my stitching lines. And again, I'm cutting on the outside of my stitching lines. Now it was helpful that I was using like a maroon thread before because I can see it so much better. Now you might think we're going to have to turn this, but we're not. I have a trick. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and press this flat. And then I'm going to come back right here to show you the next step. I just pressed it flat. That relaxes all the seams. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to cut up the center on just one side. So I'm just putting my scissors in between and I'm just going to cut up the center. So instead of turning this and dealing with pushing out all those curves, we're going to be able to turn it this way. If you want, you can make a few snips inside your curves or even on the outside of the curves up to the uh, stitching line, but don't cut through the stitching line. Let me do that on the other side too. And now I'm going to just turn and press out those curves the best we can. Do the same on the other side. Then we're going to go back to the iron. You're going to poke your curves out as needed and just press and then I'll show you. Now some of my curves turned into more like peaks and valleys, but I'm leaving it like that. And this side ironically came out more curvy, so I don't know. Now you can see this is our right side. The other side is open in the back and that's perfectly fine. We're not going to do anything about that. We're leaving that as is. That's going to go on our quilt block and we will be top stitching. Why did they come out so pointy? Oh, because see, I could have rounded those a little bit more. But this will be sewn on like this and it's going to frame our rows. Now, I really would have liked mine to be a little bit more narrow, but I'm okay with it. I could move it up a little bit and it will be like more narrow here. Hey, for the first time that I do this, I'm going with the flow here. So let's go back to this piece that I had. See if I can salvage this piece of wax paper. I'm just going to make another line. That's the worst crooked line I've ever seen. All right, I'm gonna go with this. This time, I am cutting this piece of paper out. All right, I'm going to check and make sure that this will completely cover that space, and it will. Now, I'm going to my piece of fabric. <gasps> Get out, guys. Look, I have the curve left over from the other one. Why don't I just use that curve? I'm going to do that. So I just need a curve on this side. 
Well, as far as that goes, I could have used the same pattern, but my other one is all ripped because we sewed on it. Okay, we're learning all kinds of things. Hope you're keeping up with all this. There's going to be a quiz at the end of this video. <laughs> I'm just going to put this down, and I'm going to draw a curvy line here on this fabric. I don't care about following this exact curve. All I care about is that I have it wide enough. Now this one, we're going to have to just sew kind of along the edge. This one I'll just sew on the inside of the marker. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the other side and I'm going to sew just inside that black line. We're going to cut I'm going to snip in my curves a little bit. I'm going to go press this flat. I am going to cut up the center. And I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to poke out my little curves and press them. Now this one has more peaks than this one. I wish I could round those peaks off a little bit. Why did it do that? I would just like the two to match a little bit better. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? I'm going to turn this again back, and I'm going to go ahead and stitch again in, with a little bit more of a curve. I'm just curious to see if that will work. So I'm turning that side. It looks pretty curved, but see, I think it's because you can see the red thread here. You know, it goes up to quite a point. I don't know, it doesn't really look it too much. And then I'm going to try evening that out a little bit. We'll see if that helps. It did help a little bit. I'm stopping with this. Now we're going to the machine. You're going to arrange these any way you want. You can add a couple of pins. And we're just going to top stitch along each side. And I'm just going to top stitch close to the edge. That was super easy. And that's why sewing on a foundation is so nice because it really stabilizes your fabric and it makes it doable. I'm going to go ahead and do the edge of this one. Okay, now I can take my pins out because they're both attached and then I can sew on the inside without hurting myself. We did it! Let's go square this baby up. I'm just going to trim this to as close to 13 inches square as I can. Now you know the drill. I'm going to go and sew close to the edge all the way around. Are we ready? I'm ready. I'm scared. Oh, oh, I love it so much. Look at me. I'm like a child. Whole house is shaking. I love this. Hello, nice little block. This is how I'm imagining it. I don't know why I like things to go in that direction and consider this the top. I absolutely love it. I do want to mention, most tutorials that I watch, the people who are showing you how to do something, they already know how to do it. I don't do it that way because if I take the time to do it first, I probably will never end up showing you how to do it. Two reasons. One, I fail at it and then I'll just feel like giving up and certainly won't want to try again. Two, I'll succeed, but then it's like, geez, I've got to do it again. And that just takes up too much time. So this is why with me, it's more like you're just learning along with me. I know I feel bad that I put you guys through steps of, okay, let's sew on the wax paper. Okay, let's not do that. I feel bad that I do that, but I'm hoping that it will help some people to realize that this is how we learn. We talk ourselves through things. We try it. We make changes along the way. That's at least how I do it. 
because I'm self-taught. I don't take sewing classes. I don't know what I'm doing. And I do watch a lot of tutorials just to get ideas, but I'm telling you, some of the tutorials I can't even follow. Either they are so incredibly boring from beginning to end, or they're just sewing with captions and music, and I just don't feel like following it. I'm not saying my way is better at all. I'm just saying that it's my way. My way is that we learn how to do it at the same time, together, and it's more important to me that I show you that you don't really have to know what you're doing to do something. You just do it, and you work it out, and after you do something 30 times, the 30th time might be the way you love it. So I hope that's okay with you guys, because I really don't want to take the time to say I'm going to practice with the block, and then I will show you how I made that block. I can't do that. It's taking me a long enough time with this series. Can you imagine if I had done every block twice? Not gonna happen. So I hope that I didn't confuse you too much. Do ask questions if you were confused. I think those of you who have some sewing ability will understand, and those of you who don't really understand, just ask and I'll help you the best I can, or just go ahead and try things, really. Just sit down with tons of scrap fabric, old clothes, old pillowcases, just sew, sew and sew and sew, and you will get better as you go. And then after sewing for like, what, 50 years, you'll be like me and still not know what you're doing. That is it for this quilt block. I will take some pictures, and those are coming up right now. Stay tuned. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. I have the quilt block playlist at the top right. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. And I absolutely love it when you guys share my videos. Do love. So please share if you care. Thanks.